learned yet another interesting story. Wasn't it a nice story about the twins Teju and Anita where Anita is using a very beautiful way of communicating a big lesson to her brother Teju. Teju was getting a little untidy and also uncaring for his tough means all were piled up and thrown around. So Anita thinks of a very smart way to convey a message to her brother and he gets it. So there was no pulling and fighting or none of those screaming and yelling but Anita was smart to convey a good message to her brother and he understood it too. Wasn't that an interesting story? Yes, you can go back and read it now once you pause the video. Then we will continue into the exercises and, and grammar because then it will give you a better understanding of what we are learning. So let's take a look at as always we learn new words in every unit in English. So let's see what new words are awaiting us today. On your screen you can see the word cracking means breaking. Mommy's favorite was is cracked. The egg is cracked. So cracking is breaking. Stacking. Stacking means to arrange something in a neat pile. The library had books stacked in a neat manner. You can imagine the libraries all are neatly kept. So the books are stacked or the, kept neatly in a neat pile. Blushed, feel shy, something that we feel when we get a compliment. Heartily, feeling things very deeply. Whenever we see a friend after a long time or our grandparents after a long time, we give them a hearty welcome. Beam, smile, that usually happens when you get an ice cream or a gift or a chocolate. You just beam with happiness. Okay, so those are the new words we have learned. Let's move on to the next exercise that is given in page number 24. Read the following sentences carefully and tick the options that have the same meaning. So again, we are learning a little bit more about meanings. The deer was being pursued by a hunter. The two options that is given to you is chased and chained. Pursue means to be followed or so chased would be the right answer. The deer was being chased by a hunter is the other way that you can put the sentence. The next one is Teju beamed at his sister. The, the options given are laughed and smiled. Smile, as we learned, is the meaning of beamed. Let's look at one more example. His voice is gentle. Gentle means soft. So, the answer that you will underline is soft. Moving on, in page number 25, there are some words given in the hint box. You can take a look at it and fill in the blanks in the exercise B. Telephone. When you think of telephone, you first think of hello, right? So you can write the word hello in the blank next to telephone. Let's look at one more example before we move on. Lock. Let's see which word will go with lock. Let's take a look at the next one that is a number eight. Bowl. So let's see which word in the hint box will go more appropriately with the word bowl of fruits. Yes. So that would be the ideal answer. So the others are left for you to finish. Next is question and answers. 
Let's take the first question for example. So why do you think you are asked to write answers? Is that you will remember what you have learned about sentence making and you will practice it. So will you remember the sentence making as you write? Remember to start with the capital and use the correct punctuation marks. Okay. What was printed on Teju's favorite pillow cover? Your answer would not be tiger prints. The answer is tiger prints, but that's not enough. You have to put it in a sentence. So what would your sentence be? All right, go ahead and answer these questions. You can pause the video and do it right now or you can do it at the end of the video. We'll move on to the next one, page number 26. And this is grammar time. What grammar are we going to learn today? We have learned about nouns in the previous units, right? Nouns are names of person, animal, thing and places. Okay, then we also went on to learn about proper nouns and common nouns. Now let's see what is a pronoun. Pronoun is a word that is used to replace a noun or it is also said as it is a word used to in the place of a noun. Let's see what the pronouns are. There are personal pronouns like I, me, he, she, him and her. Then we call it as the pronouns that we use are them, they, we, us. Okay. There are so many different kinds of pronouns and the subject is very vast. But today we will learn these points and we will go into our exercises. Pronouns are the words that are used to replace a noun or used in the place of a noun. Now for practice let's look at the sentences which are given below. Ankur is holding a bat. Ankur likes to play cricket. So instead of going on repeating the noun we can use the pronoun instead. That is another benefit of using a pronoun. See in this sentence, Ankur is holding a bat. He likes to play cricket. So there's only one person mentioned here. So we use the personal pronouns he. We will take a look at the fifth one. Radha has invited Tom, Ajay and Veena to her birthday party. So Tom, Ajay and Veena have gone out to buy gifts for her. That's the sentence. So imagine we are having to use the nouns again and again repeatedly, right? So instead, let's try to put the pronoun. Radha has invited Tom, Ajay and Veena to her birthday party. So they, they have gone out to buy gifts for her. We are moving on to exercise E. Choose the pronouns that best complete the following sentence. We are continuing with the pronouns. They, he are going to Mumbai. They are going to Mumbai would be the right sentence. So, you understood why in, in which place we will use what kind of pronoun, right? We will use, see one more example. Meena does not have a pencil. He is writing with Manu's pencil or she is writing with Manu's pencil. Because it's Meena, girl, we use the personal pronoun she. So let's read how it goes. Meena does not have a pencil. She is writing with Manu's pencil. Next, page number 27. As we discussed in the earlier units, listening, reading, writing and speaking all are methods that will improve your communication. Right? Communication is how you express your ideas. Okay, so we are going to first listen to
to one set of instructions and then you are going to speak and then you are going to even write. Okay. So, let us see what we have to listen to first. Listen carefully to this list of good habits. I am sure you hear this very often but I am sure hearing it another time will only reinforce it in back into your mind. Number one, you should keep your study table clean. You should regularly dust your books and notebooks. You should not throw your clothes or notebooks on the bed. You should stack your clothes neatly in your cupboard. You learnt a new word stacking, right? Yes, to arrange it neatly in a pile. Yes. So these are good habits. Now speaking part, you are asked to think and speak about different ways to keep your classrooms clean. I am sure you have some unique ideas and you can write it down and speak about it. You can even add that as keeping your home clean. You can list out some things and share it with your parents this evening when you are having your dinner. All right. So, speaking will help you get confident over the words that you are using and your ideas. Okay. All right. Writing. Write down a few lines about your favorite toy and describe it. Yes, I am sure this is exciting for you because all of you have one or more favorite toys. It's the best part of your childhood, right? You have friends, you have playing, you have all kinds of things and then a favorite toy as well. So, make a list of what things you like about your toy, you describe your toy from where you got it and present it to your family if you want to. Okay, otherwise it's a writing exercise to help you make proper sentences. This is a poem which we all can relate to at some point of our life or the other. We have misplaced something very important to us. In this case, it's a child who lost her favorite doll. It's a sad beginning but a happy ending. If you did not read this poem, why don't you pause the video and read through this poem. It's very interesting. It has rhyming words. It has so many new words. If you've already read the poem, let's move on to the new words. Charmingly, in a pleasant and attractive way. So here the doll's hair was described as charming. Curled, a curve that results in a spiral. Again, it describes about the hair of the doll, curly hair or curled hair. Many of us have curly hair as well naturally. Keith, an open place covered with grass and shrubs. We have this around our house, in our locality, in our colonies, even in our school. Trodden, to walk on or over. So in this story, the cows walked over the pretty doll. At home, sometimes we have a toys all thrown around and our family members have to or trod over it. So these are the few new words that you have learnt in this poem. The next exercise is for you to join the column A to column B words, the words that appropriately make a meaningful sentence. Okay. Let's see column A, curly, and in column B, let's find what appropriately fits the word curly. Curly hair. Yes, we just read in the poem as well. Rosy, the words given are night, hair, cheeks, bush. Cheeks would be the right answer. Rosy cheeks. Here, the doll's Cheeks were described as so red and so white, but rosy cheeks goes well with the doll as well. So rosy cheeks. Pretty, not pretty night, not pretty hair, not uh, pretty bush or evening, but pretty doll would be a 
appropriate word. You can go ahead and finish the rest of the match the following. Moving on to page number 30. Here are a few questions which can be very easily answered because you read the poem well. So take down your notebooks and start writing the answers. Grammar time. Today's grammar, we are going to learn a little more about exercises which involves pronouns. We just finished pronouns in the earlier unit but we will continue to do because practice will make us perfect. So, read the sentences carefully and replace the underlined words or nouns because we learned that pronouns replace a noun. Okay? Okay, let's look at an example. Raju is going to the market. Here, the pronoun is a personal pronoun or a singular pronoun because it's only one person, Raju. Let's take example number three. Abdul and Farida have gone to the zoo. There is more than one person. So, let's see what's the pronoun. We use they, them, we and us. Let's see which one will suit better in this sentence. Abdul and Farida have gone to the zoo. They have gone to the zoo. Them, we, us will not fit in the sentence properly. Now, even when you use pronouns, make sure it makes sentence more sensible or more proper. It should make sense. We'll take one more example. Neha, Mark and I went to the fair yesterday. So here again it is more than one person. So what do we use? One of the plural pronouns which is we, them, they, us. So let's see which one of it will fit perfectly here. They went to the fair yesterday. Could be right but here I is also involved. So we'll have to use the plural we. We went to the fair yesterday. Let's take a, an example of a noun which is an animal. The donkey was braying throughout the night. So the donkey is the noun. Let's replace it with a pronoun, it. It was braying throughout the night. So the rest of the exercise of pronouns, you can do it by yourself with all that we have learned. I'm sure you will do it fast.